Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer. I'm the moderator for this session. I'm just waiting for the presenter, uh, Monty Tanner, to log in. So um, when that happens, we'll get going. Thanks. Hi, Monty. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Good, I'm gonna make you a co-host here. Thank you. Very excited about this session. I'm glad I got to moderate it because it's a topic I'm very interested in. Awesome. Um, so I we have a, um, a shared document that they're asking people to put notes and questions and so on on. So I will um, pop the link to that into the chat. Um, and 
It's also in in Skedge. Skedge? I don't know how to pronounce that. Sed, sedge? I don't know. Anyway, you know where I mean. Um, I do, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, my friends. Give me one moment here. I will make sure I share my screen. All right. I just want to make sure everyone can see the screen. Yeah. Just a great, beautiful rainbow flag, because today we're supporting LGBTQ students in the online classroom. So welcome, welcome. My name is Monty Tanner. I use he, him pronouns. I am the assistant principal at CBE Learn, as well as this past year, I've taken on the role of assistant principal for Hub Online Learning, which is the online learning program for all of the students in the Calgary Board of Education. In addition to that, I'm also a sessional instructor with the University of Lethbridge in their Faculty of Education, where I teach a course on online teaching. Or as my husband likes to put it, that I teach teachers how to teach online, online, which I love. So I've been doing this work for a long time. I've been working in the online platform for about 15 years now. Um, so really since the infancy of the program, um, it's something that I care a lot about. It's something that I'm passionate about. And uh, I thought a few years ago, if I could combine two of my passions, which is online learning and supporting queer kids, how could I best do that? And so that's what this presentation has come from. What you're going to go through today is a fast and furious exploration of so many different topics. Um, fortunately though, I have a lot of resources that I've put together that I will be sharing out um, that everyone will have access to. I strongly believe that this topic could be its own seminar. It could be its own conference and probably should be, and I hope it can be someday. But for right now, we've got our 45 minutes together, so it will be quick. I will go through things at a little bit of a breakneck speed. Um, hopefully though, that will give some opportunity for um, interaction and questions closer to the end. The copy of this, uh, the Google Slides, is also available in the schedule shed. I'm with you, I don't know. The shed link that, um, has been shared out. Here is a very quick overview of what we're going to be uh, exploring. LGBTQ 101, gender unicorn, which is super exciting, some terminology. The bulk of the session is around support. Why is it important to support LGBTQ youth and how can we support those youth? A little bit of time for some questions and then the sharing of resources. If anyone is not able to stay until the very end, again, all of these links, all of the information is posted in the event when you register. All right, let's dive right in. So this is the gender unicorn. I kind of love this version because uh, he's a cute little chubby unicorn and for some reason I identify with that. What this is showing though is the spectrum of gender identity, gender expression. When we think about an individual as a whole, in this case, we can actually divide it down into these five different categories. So your gender identity, what do you identify with? Maybe it's female, maybe it's male, maybe it's both, maybe it's neither. Your gender expression, how you present yourself, what clothes do you wear, makeup, how do you do your facial hair, that's your expression. Sex assigned at birth is the bio, biological male, female, or something else. Who are you physically 
attracted to? Are you physically attracted to, to women? Are you physically attracted to men? Are you physically attracted to both? Or are you physically attracted to neither? And then emotional attraction, which is one reason that I prefer the gender uniform because it actually sl splits up physical attraction and emotional attraction. Are you emotionally attracted to men or women or both or neither? So looking at this, you'll see it's also a continuum. So one exercise that if we had more time, it's really good for everyone to do is to actually look at this, look at yourself on this and see, okay, where do I identify in all of these different categories? Now, you'll see also on the side there, there's the gender bred person, which is a very similar concept. Um, there's a number of graphics, there's a number of concepts around this. I like this one because it uh, allows us to open up the floor to talk about some of the terms. So you might have hear, heard some of these terms. You might hear LGBT, you might hear LGBTQ, you might hear LGBTQ, LGBTQQIP2SAA, you might hear Alphabet Mafia, you might hear the word queer, you might hear LGBTQ with the little asterisk, and that is what I use throughout this presentation. You might also see terms like GSM, gender and sexual minority, SOGI, sexual orientation and gender identity. There's so many different words, so many different terms um, for the purpose of this presentation. And because the way of my own self-identification, I use the term LGBTQ. Okay, but, but there, there's more than that. There's gotta be more than that. Okay, so I found an amazing resource uh, defining LGBTQ+. Um, this has been uh, put together by Sam Killerman, and it is a phenomenal resource. It is uh, uh, basically an ebook that you can download for free, and it has uh, so many terms. It is being constantly updated. Again, you could do a whole session just on the terminology. It's got things like... Um, asexual, ace, uh, demi-gray, um, polyamorous, uh, different topics and concepts we're not necessarily gonna go into, but it really is an excellent resource. Okay, why? Why is it important to support LGBTQ youth? More people are identifying as queer than any point in history. I don't believe that that means that there's more queer people than any point in history. I just think that it means that more people are identifying and they have found their safe place. Recent study that came out, and you'll get a, a link to this, um, came out about three days ago, indicates that uh, for people between the ages of 18 and 26, one in six identify as queer in some way. One in six. And that number is increasing. Think about the students in your classrooms. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's huge, it's significant, and it's really important. When queer students face rejection and mistreatment at home, really sometimes school can be their only safe space. We will talk about this a little bit more as we go through, but that's why we're all here to support these kids. Here's some statistics that I don't necessarily need to read through. Um, what they indicate though, very briefly, is that students that are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, two-spirit, report higher rates of suicide, higher rates of bullying, higher rates of sexual assault, higher rates of sexual harassment, and it's not okay. It is not okay. Again, we got all the stats to back this up. I strongly believe this. I strongly believe that just as with any other student, you may be the one positive adult influence in a queer student's life. You, you have to take that responsibility very seriously. Couple of videos here, again, watch these on your own time. These are the voices of students saying, what do they want from their instructors? One of these is uh, primarily focused on post-secondary. The other one is uh, students are a little bit younger, more at the high school level, 
Um, this is powerful because it comes right from these queer students telling you what I need from you as my instructor. All right, how can we support these kids? Four points we're gonna go through here. One, representation matters. Two, we're gonna talk about names and pronouns. Three, we're gonna make sure that we're aware of bullying. And four, which is really specific to the online learning context, what can we do in a technical or a logistical way? Number one, representation matters. Students need to see themselves to feel supported. I want them to look at me and say, hey, there's someone like me, this is who I am. I cannot overstate the power of representation. Having positive queer role models for anyone is so important. They need to see themselves to feel supported. If media, if peers are telling students, you don't exist, you don't matter. When people see representations of themselves in the media, this fosters a great sense of affirmation of their identity. Feeling affirmed with one's own self of, sense of self will boost positive feelings of self-worth, which is quite different than feelings if you're wrong or bad for being who you are. So how do we meaningfully do this in our classroom? Let's make sure that we include works from LGBTQ creators. Let's try and recognize achievements of queer people throughout history. Avoid assumptions of gender or sexuality. Avoid erasure, whether active or passive, and we will talk about that in a minute. And use gender neutral language. This is something that I think can be put into any, cor any course at any time, being careful of gender neutral language. So for example, when gender is irrelevant, don't use a gendered word. Don't use terms like businessman, housewife, male nurse, woman pilot. Do use terms like business person, homemaker, nurse, pilot, doctor, firefighter. There's simple ways at any grade level that you can ensure that your wording is inclusive of people that might not see themselves. Even if you talk about a male nurse and a female doctor, what about your student that doesn't identify as male and doesn't identify as female? What does that student have to look forward to? I love these little clips here. You'll see on the side here, it is a picture of uh, Samira Wiley. She was a star in Orange is the New Black. This is a picture on her wedding day when she is getting married to her female wife. And one of the comments here, getting married on the same day as my best friend is absolutely BFF goals. But are there any pictures of what their husbands look like? It's a form of erasure as well, indicating that the only valid marriage is a heterosexual marriage. Something that's come up in the media lately that we need to be thoughtful about when we talk about representation. Okay, well, what about some of the problematic comments that we know have come from JK Rowling? If you're not familiar with that, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. Um, however, she has made comments and indications that are blatantly transphobic and non-inclusive of our trans brothers and sisters. And be aware of that and how that might impact using one of her texts in your class. Be aware of what kind of conversation you might need to have. Doesn't mean that we need to not use those texts. Doesn't mean that we need to uh, eliminate um, any reference to Harry Potter and anything we're talking about, but you need to have an awareness there. So conversations might happen in your class. You might have some students that are more aware of these things and more honestly triggered by these things. You need to be aware of that. That is your responsibility. How are you going to have those conversations? What are you going to talk about? It is a little bit more challenging, we're finding, when we're dealing with 
a current, active, living artist. It is easier to be dismissive when it's someone in the past that, that's dead and gone. It's easier to talk about them in a different way than someone that's currently active. One of the best ways we can support queer youth is through names and pronouns. So when I started off this session, hi, my name is Monty Tanner. I use he, him pronouns. Simple as that. It is really exciting to see how more forms, more documents, more surveys, whatnot, actually are giving space for that, are giving space for people to put their pronouns. It's very helpful in an online environment, especially if you don't necessarily see the students, you don't have the opportunity to ask them face to face. Simple way to do that is to put it in a survey. So like I did with this session, when I start off my class, I actually say, hi, my name's Monty, he, him, and I'll be your instructor for English 30-2 this semester. Right away, that's indicating to students, not only my pronouns, but that I'm aware that people's pronouns are important to them. So I'm modeling that. And again, like I said, have an introductory survey. What's your name? What should I call you? And what are your pronouns? So this is actually the introductory survey that I've used in my course in the past. Question number one, what is your preferred name? What should I call you? Question two, what are your preferred pro pronouns? Question three, how old are you right now? It takes two seconds for someone to fill this out. For most students, for many students, won't make a difference. They'll put down their name, they'll put down their pronouns, won't make a difference to them. However, for the students that it does matter to, it matters a lot. This is actually a message that I received after providing this survey to my students. Student wrote, thank you so much. Having my name and pronouns changed mean a lot to me because I don't get that support at home. Thank you so much. And it chokes me up almost every time that I read this comment and this is why I've kept it and this is why I hold on to it because this is why we do what we do for kids like this. I don't, I can't claim that I was the only supportive adult in this student's life, but I'm proud to know that I was a supporter of this student. I see there's a hand up. Why don't I go to that question before yeah, we move on to the next one? Hey, uh, just on the, those lines, uh, I've, I've found I've been teaching for 10 years, kind of like you, Monty. So I'm, I've been around and um, I'm finding the problem is sometimes in the systems, like, for example, legal names in the CIS uh, follow to the LMS. And so uh, it's really important that we have practices to change that. So students aren't uh, unintentionally being dead named. Um, one of my students this year um, actually uh, called us out on it and said, every time I get an email from this e automatic email software, Oh, man, I think we lost you there for a second. I know that our, oh, sorry, go ahead. Even if we don't have control over fixing it, um, we, we advocate for that to be fixed with the people who can. Amazing, it's such an important point. Thank you, Amanda, for, um, for bringing that up. I totally agree. And actually, I have a couple of slides I'll talk about um, that exact thing, especially in an online environment. And I, I totally agree with that, that a student seeing um, a name that they no longer identify with um, every time they log in, they maybe they have to use it as part of their username. Every time they put a submission, they get, uh, they get a message. Um, Congratulations, Allison, you submitted this. Um, they post a discussion. Allison said this, Allison said that. Um, can be super triggering and I totally get that and I totally understand that. I believe and I have, I have this philosophy, I've had this philosophy for a long time. You call someone what they call themselves. So Amanda, because you're brave enough to 
um, to put your hand up. Um, Amanda, do you go by Amanda? Do you go by Mandy? I do go by Amanda. And I love that Zoom has the power for you to change your own name because my board makes it so that my name is Ottawa Carleton District School Board, which really uh, sucks. So uh, the fact that it, I can rename myself is incredibly helpful. And that's something we don't have with our uh, Brightspace by D2L client that we use for our LMS. They need to put in a call ticket for someone else to change it. And that takes time. Exactly, exactly. So, um we have we our board uses the same tool and it is the same issue um fortunately we found a few um good supporters workarounds where we can make it happen it's not as easy as people being able to change their own name like you indicated here so because amanda introduced herself as amanda am i going to call her mandy am i going to call her rachel no no i'm going to call her amanda and there's that's that's a level of respect that we need to have for everyone that we interact with i believe that i've had this this feeling for a long time ever since i was a small small boy because my uncle bob calls himself bob his wife calls him bob my mom calls him bob i call him bob he's uncle bob except my grandmother his mother-in-law calls him robert and she's the only one that calls him robert and she's the only one that's ever seemed to get away with calling him Robert. And I never understood that. If he's identifying as Bob, you call him Bob. I think that most people would agree that you would do the same thing in any class that you have. If you have a student that on paper, their name is Michael, he wants to be called Mike, you call him Mike. If you have a student that has a traditional name that's come to Canada, chosen a Canadian name, perhaps it's a legal change, perhaps it's not. If that's the name they identify with, that's the name you use. It should be no different if a student is transitioning into a different gender and is opting to change their name as part of that transition. You call people what they ask to be called. Nice segue, because if not, that is a form of bullying. So let's be aware of bullying. We know bullying affects every school, every workplace, many families. We know that this is a much, much larger issue. However, students that identify LGBTQ, they face a different level. Statistically, they face more bullying. In many cases, it's verbal. And in an online environment, it might be written. So. Again, it's making sure that you're aware of this, making sure that you're aware of some of the terms that students might use. There's anti-trans slurs, anti-lesbian slurs, anti-gay slurs. So this is really a clear indication of when you need to intervene in the messaging, in the content that's happening in your classroom. Homophobic, transphobic bullying does not always rely on overt use, but can be a perpetuation of harmful ideas about that community. So I, there's ideas that trans individuals are predatory and shouldn't be allowed to use a specific washroom. Um, general ideas that being queer is immoral, unnatural, um, or how about this? That's so gay. That's so gay. That meatloaf, that's gay. That song's gay. It's pretty common. It's still pretty common. It, I think that it sort of reached its peak a number of years ago, but it's something that we still hear often. So be aware of that. Be cautious of that. Be prepared to have those types of conversations. What exactly is it about that meatloaf that makes it homosexual? Make the conversation uncomfortable, unpack some things. So as an instructor, be mindful of the content, be mindful of the discussions that you have within your courses and be prepared to stand up for those that don't have a strong enough voice at this point. 
biggest advice for anything is really have clearly established ground, ground rules for discussion forums, which I'm sure you all do. There's a great link here on how to respond when someone uses uh, non-inclusive or bigoted language. It will often use some of the techniques that I do, either pointing out the absurdity of what they're saying, pointing out the flaw in what they're saying, or um, bringing light to it in some way. All right, last point here about technical and logistical. And uh, Amanda, thank you very much also for bringing this up because it is an important uh, piece here. So especially when it comes to names in a learning management system um, or in our student information system or in a provincial system. So one thing that we need to think about for myself, I, I'll use myself as an example here. Um, my name is Monty. My full name is Monty. It is not short for anything. It is not long for anything. That is my name. Therefore, what I call myself is Monty. What my parents call me is Monty. What's on my report card, my driver's license, all my documentations is Monty. What's on my marriage certificate is Monty. That is true for many people, but not for everyone. And especially if we have students that are queer, questioning, transitioning, that might not necessarily be true. They might have a legal name. They might have a name on their report card. Their parents might call them by that name or their parents might call them by the name they choose to call themselves. It's important to be aware of this. It's important to be aware of this for a few reasons, like Amanda said, for those messages that go out with a student's name that they no longer identify with, or you, at the, the opposite side of that is you want to ensure you're not inadvertently outing a student to their parent. What I do, I've got, this is right out of my grade book. This is, uh, names have been changed, of course. Um, this is out of my uh, Brightspace grade book. Um, first column here, um, is their identified name in the system? We have an open entry, which means students start at different dates. That's important to me, so I put that in. Next one is the name that they choose to be identified with. And that comes right out of that survey that I showed you earlier. Things like their age, um, gender information, if that's important. And um, because in this course, this was a course, a uh, 30 level course, which means it was a diploma level course, as an instructor, it was important for me to know if this was their first time taking it or if they've repeated this course. So I could tailor the course and the content to them individually. So this is all hidden from the students. They don't necessarily see this because they don't need to see this. They know how old they are. They know what their name is. But I'm using this right inside my grade book. So I always have a way of seeing this. I am very proud of our board for the ease in which they've made it able for us to make changes. Um, it, again, it's not as easy as a student being able to make the change themselves. However, um, they do make it very easy for us to make these changes within our student information system uh, and within, therefore, within our learning management system. At the provincial level, it is only slightly more complicated because we need some sort of documentation um, that there has been a legal name change, but we do have a place there for preferred name, which I'm really happy to see. So things are creeping along in the right direction. So really the biggest question, the big, the big takeaway is, do you see ways that you can support your LGBTQ students in your environment? How can you prove to those students that they matter, prove that you're an ally and prove that they have space in your learning environment. All right, so resources. Oh my goodness, so many resources, so, so many resources. Um, if you're familiar with um, Bitly, um, it is a URL shortener that uh, you put whatever you want in there, you put your Google Doc, you put your uh, website, whatever in there, you shorten it down, and it gives you about a seven, six or seven character code. Um, when I did this very first um, 
presentation about three years ago, it uh, generated this code for me. 2M dad, dad's F. Uh, what? Two male dads in San Francisco? How could that be any more perfect? So that's actually just the general uh, bit.ly, but you can click on that, you can access that. What that's going to show you is um, a Google document that I update constantly. There's two links right at the top. The very first link is to this exact presentation. The second link is about a 60 or so page document that you can download out of different resources that I've curated. Now in that package are things like the gender unicorn. There's things like some of the language, some of the, um, the, ver the verbiage, the terms. There's also some lesson plans that you could look at. There's some academic articles for people that like that. There's some um, uh, pieces for students, pieces for teachers, uh, pieces for parents. So I took time to sort of curate that into one downloadable PDF um, that you can use um, with yourself, with your peers, and with your students. The rest of that page is actually full of a number of different links and information. And on that page, again, I'm updating it constantly and including even things uh, the, I referenced the um, certain study that came out with one in six, that information is in there. It's an active living document. Um, so it's the kind of thing that just, just bookmark it, put it as a bookmark under LGBTQ and your Chrome tab, and you'll, you'll see when I update, um, I try and put a lot of things in there. This is something I'm passionate about. I am passionate about supporting queer kids. Um, I'm passionate about online education. And I know it was a little fast and furious uh, over this past uh, half hour or so. Um, that's kind of the point just to get your neurons firing around this, but I do want you to contact me. I want you to get a hold of me. I want you to um, message me, set up a time if you have uh, questions or thoughts or ideas, or if you've got some really great resources that you think I could add into this, I want you to let me know. So I've got my information on the screen there. Um, Monty Tanner, it's my, um, it's my Gmail account. It's my Yahoo. I think I have a Hotmail account. Um, it's my Twitter. It's my Facebook. It's my Instagram. I am very fortunate because everything online that's Monty Tanner redirects to me. I'm really lucky that way. So you'll always be able to find me somehow. One last uh, resource that I do want to uh, talk about, teachingandlearningonline.com. So teachingandlearningonline.com is a website that I put together for as part of my master's thesis. Um, and it, so it was originally put together in about 2011. Um, and then starting about a year ago, year and a couple of months ago, I realized, you know what, there's a, there's a need for this. There's a real need for this. So I actually um, created an entirely new platform, rebranded, redesigned, and created a place and space as a resource for teaching and learning online, specifically for K-12. Um, it has lots of good information in there about um, how to start with online teaching, or if you've been doing this for a while, it's got information there. What I've done is I've also put a whole page on there um, uh, specifically about LGBTQ supports. And so it has a lot of the same information that we've gone through today. Um, check it out, uh, leave me a message on there. Again, send me a tweet or an email. Um, I'd like to build that out. This is the greatest um, group of people to discuss something like this with because you already, just by the fact of being here, you already have an interest in this topic, in this uh, concept. And so I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, it is linked in, in the documents as well, specifically to the LGBTQ page, but uh, go take a look. There's things there about wellness, things about working from home, um, things about communication, things about the legalities. So I would uh, certainly invite you to take a look there. I saw someone had their hand up. So I will absolutely open this up for questions, comments, anything like that. And I will now open up the chat just to see if there's anything in there.
Leanne says, is the hardest thing taking attendance as a sub? Pronouns and preferred names, absolutely. Lisa says in our system under contact, they have a preferred name section, but then it's not used. So great. That's nice that you're asking for this, but if it's not used anywhere, what's the point? And kids will call you out on that. Ah, I like the way you, I like the way you think, Amanda. An email from the student to the superintendent. Hmm? You need to speak to the manager. You need to speak to the manager, right? I found this really inspiring. While you were talking, I actually went into my learner survey in my courses and added a question on what name do I like to be called and what pronouns do I prefer? So thank you. That's awesome. That. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. And I don't... Um, I don't, I don't say it lightly that that one comment from the student really touches me and I do, I think mm. about that all the time because sometimes our job sucks, sometimes our life sucks, sometimes COVID sucks, okay, all the time COVID sucks, and we need to hang on to those little things and hanging on to that that I can see written down. Um, I actually, I have it actually printed out in my, my um, office at the office building, which I haven't been to for a while, but um, I actually have it printed out there because it's such a concrete reminder for me that the choices that we make and the things that we do actually have an impact on the students that it needs to have an impact on. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's not, you're not talking about like massive changes or huge things we need to do. It's just because that can feel overwhelming, but it's just little things like a pronoun and a name that can really help, but aren't super onerous on us trying to figure out how to do it it's just a simple thing to add a couple of questions to a survey that I already have um, but if it can make a big difference then awesome yes thank you so much I, pre I appreciate that I I see it the as the equivalent of many of us in our traditional classrooms or offices we'll have a little pride flag or we'll have a safe space flag um, every couple of years I know from the in our board they, they send things around you know this is a safe welcoming caring kind of space. I mean, we've got little rainbow stickers we can put on things. Um, and so just having that in the office, I mean, maybe having a picture of me with my husband on our wedding day is not a good enough sign, doesn't matter. But just knowing that it's a safe space and that students can come to you, can come out to you, um, and that you'll be safe and respectful. And if, that, if it takes putting a little sticker in the window, if it takes putting a uh, he, him, by your email signature, it is those little things that really take less than 30 seconds that mm -hmm. I can't, un I can't underestimate, or I can't, I can't explain enough how important that is. So mm -hmm. thank you for recognizing that. I wanted to add that, like, for some of our online uh, learners, uh, especially asynchronous ones, um, this is maybe the first time that they're able to try out, uh, like, this part of their identity with their peers. Um, and so that was a huge thing when a student first told me that, uh, that made a big difference to me um, in saying this is the only space where this is my reality and it's very helpful. So um, definitely keep fighting for those kids. I think I recognized that a number of years ago um, because um, we, our school also, also operates a junior high school and um, we had hands down the largest number of transgender slash transitioning students in the entire city at our school. And not all, but many of those students made the choice to enter our school in grade nine, take that as their transition year for real, enter grade 10 with their new name, pronoun, identity, expression. And um, being the online school at the time um, made that very possible for them. And we had, um, we do have a great staff. We have a diverse staff. We have a wonderful staff. And um, everyone made those experiences really positive for those students. So um, yeah, Leanne, you're saying you, you, you see that same thing. I think, I think it's wonderful. And I think that if that's one of the services as an online school that we can offer, bravo. Let's freaking do it. I love it. So. Mm 
<laughs> right? They're the most fun. They're the most fun. Students that that are really questioning themselves at a deep, deep level, they're so much fun because they're they usually have that different level of maturity that other students haven't had to go through. And they fought battles. They fought battles with themselves. They fought battles probably with their family. They fought battles with the school system. They're they're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Students like that. I've I've really enjoyed that. No, I've heard too many no. I've heard too many stories of especially being an, an English teacher of uh, students that'll come out through their writing. Um, and if that's gay, trans, bisexual, whatever, that they'll actually come out through their writing. And that's a natural part of um, the relationship that you might have with a student as an English teacher. And then because there's the additional level of not having to look me in the eye every single day, there's that semblance of anonymity. So I do think that um, it is a safer space for yeah. students, like you're saying, that might be in their very first steps of this. Yeah, and I think it's important too, because I've definitely had students come who were transitioning, um, who came because they were not having a good time in brick and mortar school and they were being harassed and bullied. So again, making sure they know that you're safe and your courses are safe is really important to them. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Good idea. Empowered to help them providing that one space where they can use their preferred name. I mean, how empowering and exciting is that to be able to just use that name that maybe they've never really spoken out loud, especially to an adult. Uh, I would find that many of these students, they've got pretty supportive friends in lots of cases, or they found some sort of a supportive community. Um, one of some of the research that I've read um, really indicates and is attributing two factors to the number of young people that are identifying as non-heterosexual and non-cisgender is the two factors is COVID and TikTok. So because these young people have been forced into seclusion of some sort and they've been searching for their community, because of the algorithms of TikTok, there's there's a joke that I'm sure you're at least familiar if you're not on it, I'm sure you're familiar with TikTok, but there's a joke that goes around TikTok that says, it took me 20 years to figure out that I was gay. TikTok figured it out in five minutes. And it's kind of true because of the algorithms, because of the length of time that you watch certain videos, it will customize your feed. So if you start watching videos about non-binary people just going about their day, being non-binary, doing their thing, it will show you more and more of that. And it'll show you more and more and more and more content creators. And you will recognize that I'm not alone. There is a community out there. Community might be spread across the globe, but I'm not alone. And that's so empowering, so empowering. On that note, I think that that is the end of our time together. I appreciate each and every one of you for um, choosing to come and spend some time with me on a Friday, um, choosing to come and learn about or learn more about this topic that does mean a lot to me. I'm thankful and grateful to the um, supporters of this uh, convention for putting it all together. Um, it shows great, um, I have great respect for them in accepting a presentation like this. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. Again, please, honestly, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, not the, I'm not a self-professed expert, but I have lived experience and I've done a lot of research on this, so I can always at least point in the right direction. So thank you all thank so you, much. Monty. That was awesome. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your conference if you have any further sessions. I look forward to connecting with you and have a good weekend. You too, Monty. Thank you. Bye.